Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from the unguided Father Shadow out October 9th on Napalm Records. This album has 14 tracks, 59 minutes in length, and this is the band's fifth full length studio album. This is a record that has me a little bit divided. There's a lot of things I like about this album and there's a lot of things I don't like about this album. And some of those things are exactly the same thing. I know it sounds strange, it sounds weird, but once I explain to you, I think it will make sense. If you look at the structure, for example, let's start with that. This album is very fluid, very dynamic. They did a wonderful job creating an overall structure that allows the record to have 14 tracks, 59 minutes, and be very fluid, very quick paced moving. The songs are almost seamless, interconnected with each other. So you get lost in that track listing, you get lost in that path that the record has because it just moves so well from song to song. Now, one of the reasons why it moves so well is not only the structure that it has, but also the soundscape that they created. Because there's a lot of repetitiveness across that soundscape that permeates through all 14 tracks. So you start to listen to a lot of the same elements being repeated across all of these songs. But that repetitiveness is what allows the record to be fluid. So there you go. I like it because it's fluid, but at the same time I don't like it because it repeats itself. And then it becomes a little bit monotonous and it becomes really hard for the listener to be able to see the trees from the forest because everything kind of becomes one. Now when you look deeper into the sound, there are definitely three main elements that really push it forward, that are the key pillars of how the soundscape of this record is put together. And that is the guitars, the drums and the keyboards. As far as guitars are concerned, I love the guitars on this record, specifically the solos. Because the overall sound, I felt they stripped away the power from the guitars. I really wanted this album, considering everything that it has, considering in how it's constructed and how it's put together, I wanted the guitars to be on the driving seat. I wanted the guitars to determine where the sound of this record is going. And that's not the case with this album. I felt that they were a little bit stripped of their power and perhaps the place where you got to see them really shine was in the solos. There's not one song on this album that does not have a magnificently played solo. So there you go, once again, I love the guitars, but I hate the fact that they like a little bit of bite at the same time. This duality is present throughout the whole record as far as I'm concerned. When you get into the drums, I love what they did with the drums. The drums are not overpowering. There's nothing in this album that's really overpowering from a heaviness perspective. But the drums play an important role. They give a little bit of bass and a little bit of foundation to the overall soundscape of the record and allow the other elements to kind of push themselves to the forefront and have a more predominant role. For a record that has this sort of sound, this sort of approach, more hooky, more catchy, uh, almost with a pop vibe at times, you don't really need the drums in the forefront per se. You need them to be a little bit more subdued, have a little bit more of a control approach and allow all the other elements to really build upon them to create the overall soundscape that you want for the record. As far as keyboards are concerned, they were a little bit overused from the perspective that I felt that the sound on this record was really driven by them. Like I mentioned earlier, I wanted the sound driven by the guitars. I would like the keyboards to be a layer, a foundation that added melody, that added atmosphere to the how the record sound and how the record came across. But more often than not, I felt myself just losing myself within the song because there was just so much keyboard melody. The sound was really pushing in that direction and I wanted something else. I wanted something a little bit more substantial. So overall, it makes the record feel a little bit more, not a little bit, a lot more melodic. It has a completely different atmosphere and that adds to the overall playability and then it plays into the repetitiveness of the record. So all of these things come full circle, but I really wanted it more as a layer and not as much in the forefront. It really takes a little bit of the sting it takes a little bit of the way of the power of the record and you can look at this album and even define it as melodic death metal. This is melodic metal because there's really nothing of death metal in this record. You cannot just look at one element and say because there's that one element there, this is a melodic death metal album. It's not the case with this record. I didn't really feel that. I felt that this was a melodic album, a melodic metal album that has a lot of great hooky and catchy songs, but at the same time it gets a little bit lost in everything that is happening. And one of the reasons why you get lost in everything that is happening is really the overuse, the overpower of the keyboard melodies throughout all 14 tracks. One of the highlights of this record, in my opinion, outside of the guitar solos and how they were used for that specific purpose is the vocals. The vocals on this record are outstanding. This is a record that's really created for the vocals. Because if you look at the song structures, if you look at how they're put together, 
on how hooky, how catchy the choruses are, how, how banger they are, like they really have a lot of energy, a lot of power coming over the top. This is really a record built for the vocals to allow the vocals to absolutely shine. And this is why I say that in some moments you almost feel like there's a pop driven sound within it because that allows the vocals to be in the forefront and have the predominant role that they have on this record. I prefer the clean vocals. I felt that they were haunting, really delivered on the on the dot. Like they just had a lot of strength, a lot of power, a lot of ambiance, a lot of atmosphere to them. But the harsh vocals were perfectly matched in terms of how they were used. I would say they perhaps used less than the clean vocals, and that's fine by me because I was really a huge fan of the clean vocals on this record. But I felt that the use of the harsh vocals didn't overshadow anything else. It's not like they took over the tracks. They were just an addition in order to give more flavor to the song, most often than not, in order to create a little bit more heaviness to the track, to give it a little bit more substance. I just didn't feel like it was enough on its own to create heaviness and to add a little bit of that melodic death metal to the overall picture of this album. It adds a layer, but it doesn't change the overall dynamic of the record and definitely doesn't change the overall soundscape that the record has. All in all, I enjoy the record. I just don't think this is a memorable album. It's not an album that you're gonna look back upon and say, oh, I really like this song, I really like that song. The whole album feels as one. It doesn't really allow you to gravitate towards a specific song. Like I said earlier, it's a record that's really hard for you to tell the forest from the trees because it all kind of sounds as one. So it is a good record. Yeah, it's a good record. Just not a memorable one. Just not one that will make me come back to it time and time and time again. Once I listen to it once, I pretty much got the gist of it and I don't really need to kind of dive in into it any deeper because it's really just what's at the surface. There's really nothing below the surface as far as this record is concerned. Now, as far as songs goes, I wanna talk about three songs that I really enjoy on this record outside of the singles. And I wanna start off with War of Oceans. Really catchy tune, uh, great guitar melody, the keyboards and vocals, everything comes in, really creating a lot of melody for this track and how it comes across. Uh, uh, very driven in the verses more so than, than anywhere else in the song. The verses really push the song forward, which in my opinion allows the chorus then to be very bombastic, like almost over the top, but still have that poppy catchiness to it, making it very hooky in how it comes across. The guitars bring in some force, but not a lot. They have a little bit of bite, but not too much. The keyboards with the melody that they have really permeate throughout the track and start to kind of overpower all of the other elements musically that this track has to offer. From beginning to end, is it really tries to merge melody with heaviness, but the heaviness is just not consistent enough to really have a huge role on how this song comes across. Now, the guitar solo on this track is outstanding, but that's nothing new. This record has incredible, incredible guitar solos. Next, Breach. The clean vocals are very haunting in this track and, and they really showcase all the power, all the strength and all the warmth that they have throughout the album. This song really represents them well and how it's structured and how it allows the vocals to be delivered in the fashion in which they are. The harsh vocals change the dynamic of the song. It adds intensity and it really changes the look that the track has. That happens more so with the vocals being the trigger of change, the dynamic change within the track more so than musically. Musically, I felt that the track was a lot more balanced, more even from top to bottom. The changes are really happening as far as the vocals are concerned, and that makes it feel like everything else is changing. So it's a nice approach, a nice idea in order to change things around and, and give a different trigger in order to make the song move up and down as far as the overall scale is concerned, but a very melodic driven track all around. Last but not least, Standalone Complex. The verses have a little bit more bite and I really enjoy that both musically and vocally. I felt the guitars were a little bit heavier and they stayed heavier throughout the verses and consistently throughout the song. And same thing with the vocals starting off with harsh vocals in the verses, tagging along with that extra bite that the guitars had, add a little bit more substance to the way the song sounds and the way that it comes across. The clean vocals add a different palette and they come in in the chorus and allows it to be a little bit more softer. It allows to have a different kind of energy, but still stay hooky and stay catchy. That's really one of the key elements throughout this record, besides how good the solos are, is how hooky and catchy the choruses are on this album. 
but the song moves along, the transitions are really smooth. This is not a track that offers abrupt ends from verses to chorus, even though dynamically is very different between the two. But it's very well merged, very well interconnected, and it allows the song to really move smoothly from top to bottom and still be a hooky, catchy song, just with a little bit of an extra bite on the guitars and vocals. I wish more songs had been built this way. This is it guys, The Unguided with Father Shadow out October 9th on Napalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.